Um, this short video is going to talk about checking over your analytical summary before you submit your draft. So in this course, we're going to be using draft workshops so that you can review your classmates work, but also get feedback on your work. And those workshops are really important because they give you a sense of the assignment better. They give you some more mastery over the concepts um, and they give you a lot of feedback so that you can make your work even better. But to get the best outcome, from these draft workshops, it's really important that you're submitting a complete draft that's as good as you can possibly make it. Um, it's kind of a waste of everyone's time if you know, you're submitting a draft and you know what's wrong with it already. So I'm gonna give you a few things to check over with your summaries um, as you work on finalizing those drafts and before you submit them. So just as a reminder of what good summaries do, good summaries always balance what the original author says with the writer's own focus. Our focus for this particular assignment is an analysis of how and why the author is using certain strategies to address their rhetorical situation. So that should be in there as well. It should be true to the original. So you wanna make sure that you go through and you haven't missed anything. Um, it should emphasize aspects that interest you, the writer. And again, those aspects for this assignment are going to be an analysis of how the writer has written this. Good summaries require a suspension of your own beliefs. So when you do a summary, there shouldn't be any real bias about what you think about the topic there. And in a good summary, a reader should not be able to tell whether you agree or disagree. So this is a really good thing to kind of check your summary over for. You should not have any place in your draft where you're saying, I agree with what this author says, because it's not really the point of the assignment. You want to make sure that you are avoiding the closest cliche syndrome. So make sure that what's getting summarized is the actual view of the author and not just the closest cliched idea that people have about the topic. Closest cliched syndrome is the writer mistakes a cliche for the author's view. So you want to make sure that you're avoiding that, that you're really breaking down the article and getting to the nitty gritty of what the author is actually saying, not kind of the surface of what you think the conversation is about. So the big problems in summaries that we tend to see and things that you can check for are, again, mistaking that cliche for the actual argument. Um, list summaries are really problematic. So list summaries are when you're basically just saying first they say this, then they say this, then they say this, then they say this, but you're not giving any understanding of why they move on to the second point or how they support their arguments. So we really want our summaries to be descriptive, not just lists of the points. We don't want to misrepresent the source to so make sure you're reading carefully and make sure you give the complete information because leaving something out is misrepresentation. You don't want to display any bias against the argument or the author. Even if you completely disagree, a summary should just be a presentation from a neutral perspective. And then finally, we want to check over our signal phrases. First of all, making sure that you are consistently using signal phrases throughout paragraphs and throughout the summary. Um, if you're new to using signal phrases, it's going to feel like you're using too many of them, but I promise you, you're not. Go through your signal phrases and check and see, are you using something beside the author writes or the author says? Use your signal phrases to be descriptive. So see if you can get some of these. Um, if the author is making a claim, here's some examples of verbs that we can use. If the author is agreeing with something in the larger conversation, if the author is questioning or disagreeing with a larger conversation or larger point, or if the author is making recommendations. So once you get through your draft, go through and look for those terms like the author writes, the author says, and see if you can replace some of those verbs with more descriptive and specific words. So those are a few things to take a look at as you are checking over your drafts. You can also check over your final essays with, with this information. If you have any questions, feel free be sure that you are reaching out and letting me know. Good luck with getting your drafts done and I'm looking forward to reading them.